Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about Caridwen and her cauldron and what does that actually mean as a story for us as magical practitioners. But before I do that, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. And if you want to know more about Wicca and witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you want to know where to start your witchcraft practice, but you're not sure of what to do, where to go, how to pace yourself, have a look at my free video, How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice. The link is in the description field below this video. Caridwen is a Celtic goddess from the Welsh pantheon. And her story about her, her cauldron and Taliesin is part of the Mabinogion, which is where the Arthurian legends come from. So it's, it's part of this very rich uh, Northern European Celtic mythology. And a lot of witches do feel very, very connected to the image of Caridwen and of course the cauldron. But what does the story actually mean? Well, first of all, this is a version of the story. Now, a lot of these myths, the, because they're so old and they've been told so many times by various different people, they often change. So you'll hear different versions of the myth and often the imagery in the myth will also be different according to who's telling the tale and where it came from. So you'll find that a lot of the things that you'll read about this particular myth, Caridwen and the Cauldron and Taliesin aren't always exactly the same. So if this isn't exactly the same as the version you've heard, it's just simply because when stories are told verbally, they change. And that's how myths, myths get about, they do change. And to, to a large degree, changing with the times is part of the, the wealth of these, these amazing myths and how they actually end up surviving for so long as well. So the story is that you have the goddess Caridwen and she has two children, a son and a daughter. The daughter is very beautiful and very bright, and the son is ugly and malevolent. And what Caridwen wants to do is she really wants to transform her son from being this ugly and malevolent uh, being into a being who is wise and brilliant, okay? because she doesn't want him to be the way that he is. And so she does a brew in a cauldron, a magical brew in her cauldron, to transform her son into this brilliant wise being and she hopes that with the wisdom and the brilliance he will no longer be malevolent. But the brew takes a year and a day to come to completion and in that time various different herbs have to be added according to the different astrology at different times. And then at the end of that year and a day when it's all brewed and ready to go all he needs to do is drink three drops of this magical potion and he will be transformed into this wise, brilliant uh, person. She leaves the cauldron in the care of Guayan, who is like an assistant to her or a servant to her. And on the day before it's ready to be fully brewed, Guayan accidentally ends up ingesting the potion. So there's different stories about how that happens. Uh, one story is that it, uh, it sort of leaks out or, or spits out because it's, it's boiling and so some of it spits out. It gets onto his, his hand or his thumb or a finger and um, he puts it straight in his mouth because it's hot and boiling and that's what we often do when we burn ourselves. We put it straight in the mouth to somehow cool it. And he of course ends up ingesting the, the droplets which happen to be three. And what happens is he ends up getting transformed into a more brilliant uh, person and a wise person. And once he realizes this has happened, he knows that, oh no, if Caridwen finds out, she's going to kill me. So he does a runner. And then you have this aspect of pursuing going on where he shapeshifts into, because he's now brilliant and wise and all magical, he is now able to shapeshift. So he shapeshifts into a rabbit she shapeshifts into a greyhound to pursue him. Then he shapeshifts into a fish. She shapeshifts into an otter. 
he shape shifts again into a, a small bird, she shape shifts into a hawk, he shape shifts then into a grain of corn, and then she shapes shifts into a hen, and then she actually does eat him. Now she eats him, and then nine months later she gives birth to a son. And she knows that this, of course, is him, and so while she's pregnant with him, she decides that when she gives birth, she's actually going to kill him. But what happens is that when she does give birth, he's so beautiful that she decides she can't do it. So she puts him in a satchel and puts him into the ocean. He is then rescued by a couple, one of whom is a prince, Prince Elfin, and they decide to rear him and he becomes Taliesin, the bard, the poet through legend. And so that's the story. It's a very interesting story. And if you take it literally, it doesn't sound too good. And a lot of pagan myths, the gods and goddesses sound quite treacherous. They sound a lot of the time like you don't want to have anything to do with them. And a lot of the criticism that um, monotheistic religions uh, throw at pagans is that our gods are, you know, really horrible and diabolical and look what they do and, and look at Keridwen, she's, she's running around trying to kill people and, and blah blah blah. <laughs> but the point is, it's, it's not that we should take any of these uh, myths literally, they're not literal, okay? What they are is they're metaphorical, they're heavy in symbolism that in ancient times people understood a lot better than we do now. We've come through an era where, because of our rationality, we try to take everything literally and we don't understand metaphor, we don't understand myth, and hence we don't understand spirituality either because the, the truths, the spiritual truths, are told through these myths. But because we want to be rational and logical all of the time, we can't understand them because the rational mind can't understand a myth. The rational mind can't understand these truths because it's limited in what it can do. It's very limited to the physical realm, essentially. So we have to think outside the box and we have to look at metaphor. And this story is steeped in very, very, um, lots of metaphors, lots of deep uh, meanings that uh, can take a long time to contemplate. And each aspect of the tale has to be contemplated to find out what it is all about. So I just wanted to talk about a couple of things <laughs> Uh, that have probably stand out the most and of course there's a lot of other things that we can explore but there's not enough time in this video to do that. First of all, Keridwen is a goddess that is the keeper of the cauldron of knowledge. Okay, so we're dealing with knowledge here. So remember that. She's a goddess that is often associated with the underworld because she deals with death and transformation and rebirth. And that's what a lot of underworld gods and goddesses deal with. They deal with death and rebirth. And they're often misunderstood because of that. They're often seen as being these dark, sinister beings because they deal with death and rebirth. But that's not, that's not understanding the, the real strength of these, these deities. She's also a deity of fertility and inspiration, magic, so she's all of these things. And when you look at the story, the story contains all of these things too. Now what she is doing with a cauldron is transforming, transforming an alchemical transformation, raw metal into gold, which is essentially um, indicated by her trans wanting to transform the sun into this raw metal, which from this raw metal of being this sort of dark matter, which he is because he represents the sort of dark aspect of polarity or the sinister side of polarity. Well, she wants to transform him into gold, okay, which is this brilliance and this wisdom. And so she, can, she magically, so this is where the magic comes into it, uh, that puts a brew in the cauldron in order to do that. And the fact that at certain times different herbs are added in accordance with the astrology also matches up to the magical aspect of it and the correspondences between herbs and planets. What happens is that the one that it's intended for isn't the one who ends up benefiting from it. Now that often happens when it comes to spiritual work. 
often something maybe you think is intended for one person but it actually ends up helping somebody else and a lot of the time we don't really know who is meant to receive uh, the wisdom and who isn't meant to receive the wisdom because often wisdom isn't something everybody is ready for at the same time and some knowledge some people should never have because they're not mature enough to have it and so you can never know who, who the one the wisdom is meant to go to will go to, but it will go to the one it's meant to go to. And in this case, it's Guan. And so he ends up with it. And then you've got that aspect of pursuit. So he's transformed and in his transformational process, he is being pursued by the dark goddess. He's being pursued by the one who holds the keys to the knowledge. He's being pursued by this, this being of, of, that brought the knowledge to him. And when we're on the path, it is like a pursuit. There is a lot that we do have to grapple with. And when we want more knowledge, we want more wisdom, we want to know the truth of ourselves and the world, it is like we're being pursued by something. And this pursuit is our desire for the truth. And it can be all-consuming. We also have this need to try and get away from the lies, to get away from the illusion of the world and what we've been told it is and we realize it isn't. We want to get away from suffering. We want to get away from these things. So it is like we are being pursued. There's a connection there with him being the prey because he turns himself into all of these aspects that are typically prey, like a rabbit or a fish and a small bird and, a, and corn. And she's the predator, so she turns herself into the predator. So you've got a predator-prey relationship going on here. She turns herself into the greyhound, and then the otter, and then the hawk, and then the hen. And then he's consumed. He's consumed by the mother of knowledge. He's consumed, and then he's reborn again. So there's so much about being pursued, being the pursuer, being consumed, so that surrendering to the Great Mother, surrendering to the Mother, which is what happens when he's consumed by her. He has to surrender to her for nine months and just let things be. And then she rebirths him into this beautiful uh, creature again. He's sent into the ocean and the ocean again is this sort of dark, womby place and where he is then delivered to his new parents and he becomes this wise poet to Liason. So much transformational energy there. And the role that the goddess plays in this as the dark goddess, the dark aspect, of, dark aspect of the goddess, is the denying force, the holy denying force, as Gurdjieff would say. And the three, the symbolism of three, so it's three drops that have to be consumed, is that law of three. When we look at magic, we always see the number three coming in is there's the number of creation. You have the negative polarity, the positive polarity, and the neutralizing force. Caradron represents the denying aspect or the negative polarity when she's in pursuit, when she's in her dark aspect. And to some extent, Taliesin represents, or not Taliesin, Guayan represents the more positive force. And so together, as they're pursuing and then merge when she swallows him and gives birth to the neutralizing force which is Taliesin. So you've got the dark the dark and the light as polarities don't really do much by themselves they're destructive you can have too much light you can have too much dark. What creates life and what creates the wisdom and the the, the beauty is actually the two forces coming together into a third and this is what we see in this myth, is this, this law of three. You've got the denying aspect of Caradwin playing the, the villain. <laughs> you've, you've got more the affirming aspect of the innocence of Gwyn because it happened accidentally. And then when they kind of merge together and she acts as a, a channel, the, we end up with Taliesin, which is like the, the force that neutralizes uh, or, or the new birth of something very new. So it's understanding these deeper aspects to the law of three and the aspects of the different characters when they're playing their different roles. And all of the gods and goddesses of the underworld often play that denying force role. 
And a lot of the, the deities that tend to be more into the upper world will often play more the affirming side. But you need both in order to have creation. So it's understanding that. The spiritual path is like walking a razor's edge. And as you see with the story of Taliesin, he does walk a razor's edge. As soon as he's given the wisdom, he starts to walk a razor's edge because he's, in, he's being pursued. And when we do start to wake up and see the truth of reality, we do become still pursued by the past, by the, the, the ignorance and the illusion. Because there is a force that wants to pull us back into this illusion and we're constantly having to run away from it, constantly having to move away from, always falling back into that ego illusion again. So that is another aspect of that myth too. It's like we always have to be aware that falling back into our old illusory habits uh, and, and the ways of ignorance uh, is always there pursuing us. And so we always have to be moving forward on this, this razor's edge. And the razor's edge is about the fact that when you start to wake up to more about what the truth may be, you start to see things differently. And that can have an, an effect on the ego. The ego can sometimes grab at it and take off in a direction with it that isn't helpful. So you can fall off the razor's edge into a very, very, um, into nihilism, into mental, into uh, insanity, some people will say, or into a sense of, oh, okay, I can do pretty much whatever I want because, you know, this whole idea of good and evil and um, retribution and all that isn't real. But that's not the truth. That's just the ego trying to grab it. it it's, it's more, you do walk, walk a razor's edge, but there's no other way to walk because we either stay in illusion and stay in that uh, state of not knowing before we've had the experience with the brew and the cauldron. Uh, and then, and that's the type of life that um, we often are trying to escape from. That's why we're in magical circles in the first place is because we're trying to escape from the suffering and move into what is the truth of all this? What are we doing here? Why are we here? <laughs> And this is just a beautiful myth that helps us explain that. So spend a lot of time with that myth, uh, meditate on it, look at the imagery of it. Don't think too much of it. Don't let the rational mind try to analyze it too much because it's going to trip over itself. Just allow your intuition to grab it and just take bits and pieces with it. And eventually it will put the pieces back together and you'll understand that this is a very beautiful myth that's just rich with uh, energy like all of the myths are. So if you want to learn Wicca and Witchcraft with me, do take a look at my course, Mystery Witch School 101 Academy. We work with witchcraft in a way that helps make it deeper for you so that you can start to really feel your connection to who you truly are and have a deep spiritual practice using the witchcraft or the Wiccan version of witchcraft form. and practicing the craft as opposed to just learning about it, slowing everything down and actually really digging in and practicing the craft and being part of a community of like-minded people as well. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are interested in learning Wicca with me, take a look at the Mystery Witch School 101 Academy because the link is in the description field below this video. Thank you for watching. Blessed be.